Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. I've got another design for you today. I love shooting time-lapse videos of my 3D prints, but the Prusa style printers, the one where the build platform actually moves back and forth, this presents a bit of a challenge because it introduces just way too much movement into the video and they never come out looking that great. So a way that I found to address this is to actually take the camera and just put it right on the bed so that the camera moves with the bed and you get smoother videos that look more like this. Now this was printed in vase mode, which gives it that extra smoothness, but you clearly see the advantage of having the camera move along with the bed. A quick and dirty fix was just to place some foam tape on the bed and attach the camera to it. However, this locked you to that one angle and led to a sticky mess when trying to remove the tape. A design I came up with involved modeling a bracket with a slot cut out of it where I friction fit a magnet. And since my glass plate attached to the heated bed with a metal binder clip, I can simply attach the bracket right onto the binder clip and it would hold with the magnet. I can next attach the camera and it would stay in place. This was a huge improvement over the foam tape, but I decided to get rid of the magnet altogether, make that opening a lot bigger, and after attaching the camera to the bracket, I can just come in with the binder clip and attach directly to the build platform, resulting in a simpler design and a more secure attachment. There is one flaw with this design. For example, do not attach the camera until after the printer finishes its homing procedure because the white gantry will move down and has the potential of crashing right into the camera. The camera can also crash into the white gantry as the bed moves to its homing position. So the rule here is to not attach the camera until all homing and calibration procedures have completed, your print has begun, and you are confident that the camera is going to be away from any moving parts. All right, let's jump into Fusion 360 and see how I designed this. We'll begin by going to sketch and creating a sketch right on our XY plane. So we'll select that plane, and then next we'll draw a center rectangle. So back to sketch, down to rectangle and center rectangle. We'll begin that sketch right on the origin. So we'll click once, release, and then drag out. Now we can enter our dimensions. In this case, it's gonna be 25. So I'll enter that in for the width, hit tab, and enter 16 for the height there, and then enter. Now I can zoom in, go to stop sketch, and I wanna extrude this. So I'll go to create, extrude, choose my rectangle orbit a little bit to see my arrow and I'm gonna drag that arrow up and give this a dimension of 10 millimeters and hit enter. Okay next I want to shell this part out here to have the opening uh, on this uh, extruded rectangle so we'll go to modify and then down to shell and I'm gonna select that front face and I'm gonna do an inside thickness of two millimeters and click OK. Now I want to create another sketch on top here and basically what I'm looking to do is create these, I guess I'll call them fingers that come out that's going to uh, interlock with the actual uh, GoPro. So what's important here is the thickness which I can see is 2.5 millimeters and then the spacing in between them which if I do an inspect here between this face and this face I can see that that's 3.5 millimeters. So we'll close that, go back to our design. And we'll go to sketch, create sketch, and I'm gonna select that top surface. And we'll start by creating a rectangle. So let's go to sketch rectangle, and we'll, this time we'll do a two point rectangle. So I'll, I'm gonna start this outside here somewhere, anywhere will work, and I'm gonna go to, uh, or I'm just gonna click once, uh, and then click a second time to create the opposite corner. D for dimension, and I'm gonna select this top line here and make that 2.5 millimeters. Okay, now I'm gonna use my collinear constraint here to constrain this top line to the be the same uh, line as the top line here on our uh, extruded rectangle. And I'll do the same thing with the bottom to have that match up as well. Now I want to align this rectangle to be in the center of this bigger rectangle. And to do that, I'll grab my midpoint constraint Click on this top line and click on uh, this other top line and that brings it to the middle. 
So there's a few ways we can go about creating two more copies of this one on each side. Uh, I'll choose the rectangular pattern here. So we'll go down to uh, go to sketch and then down to rectangular pattern. And for my object, I'm just going to double click to select that whole chain. And next we'll go down to make sure as far as distance type, we're going to choose spacing. And I want three of these, so quantity is fine, but I do want symmetric instead of one direction, so we'll choose that. Now I can take this arrow and just start dragging that out. I need to enter that distance, and because I chose spacing, it's going to be the distance that this is going to be uh, spaced out. So I can see that the distance starts as soon as I start moving it. And I know this is at 2.5, so at 2.5 distance, let's see if I type that in. It's going to be right adjacent to that uh, those lines are pretty much going to be on top of each other um, so i know what i want is a spacing of 3.5 so i'm just going to do the addition in here i want 2.5 and i'm going to do a plus 3.5 right in that distance box and hit ok and that gives me my two other rectangles spaced out so now i can go to stop sketch and i'll orbit uh, and go to create extrude and just select each of these three profiles there and I'm going to extrude those up 14 millimeters and click OK. Alright, now we need to create the opening here so that we can go ahead and put that bolt through to secure our camera in place. Uh, to do that I'll create another sketch right on this surface here and I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, let's approach this by, actually we'll just draw this anywhere um, for now. And I want the diameter to be 5.2 millimeters. Oops, type that again, 5.2, and hit enter. Enter twice. And what we're going to do is we need to constrain this uh, to the midpoint and add a dimension from the center point to the bottom here. So let's start with the dimension. I'll hit D for dimension. Click on that center point and then click on the bottom line here and then drag out or move the mouse out and then we'll enter that distance to be eight millimeters and hit enter. All right, now to get this to the middle, I'm gonna go to sketch and just grab a point here and I'm gonna place that point right on the center there and I can see I'm in the center because I have that little triangle constraint there. So I'm gonna left click and now I can simply go to my horizontal slash vertical constraint and constrain the center circle to that point and now it's completely constrained. So I'll click on Stop Sketch, we'll rotate, I'll select that profile, I'll hit E on my keyboard for Extrude, start dragging it in as a cut, and I'm gonna go and change distance to All, and click OK. All right, so now I can see I have a hole all the way through, and next I'm gonna fillet these edges here just to give it that rounded look that we have there. So I'm going to hit F for fillet, which can also be found under the modify menu, uh, fillet. And we can go ahead and select each one of these edges. And I can either drag this arrow in. Notice with the fillet, if you go too far, it acts a little crazy. Um, so we're just going to type 8 millimeters there, and that gives me a nice rounded uh circular uh, look there and I'll click OK. And now to add some strength uh, to these fingers here I'm gonna also add a fillet to these uh, edges here on the bottom where it connects to the main part so F for fillet and I'm just gonna select each one whoops not that one if you do select something by accident just uh, select it again and it goes away. Uh, nice thing about the fillet tool is you can actually select right through an object and it's smart enough to know what you want. And I'm going to do a fillet of just one millimeter on those and click OK. And next I want to bring this extrusion down a bit. I don't need this to be two millimeters. So I'm going to click on this surface here uh, and bring down that thickness from two to, I want it to be just 0 0.6 millimeters thick. So. I know that it's two millimeters right now in thickness, so I'm gonna hit E for extrude and start dragging this down and I'm gonna enter a negative 1.6 millimeters. Uh, I'm sorry, 1.4 millimeters. And now uh, if I do an inspect here between this surface 
and this surface, I can see that that's 0 0.6 millimeters, which is exactly what I want. So that's looking good so far. And the final thing is I'll just go ahead and fill it all these outer edges just to give it a nice little curved look. And I'll do the outside in inside as well. So select those four or actually eight edges total and we'll just do a one millimeter fillet all the way around and click OK. All right, so that's it. Now I can send this to the 3D printer. I'm actually gonna make this or print it on my MakerBot. So I'll go to Make 3D Print, uh, select my object, click OK. Uh, the reason for my MakerBot, I mean, for small objects like this, I just like sending it to the MakerBot because um, I don't need to heat the bed. It just prints really quick. But I don't need to, um, actually, I don't want it to have this orientation, so I'm going to flip it. I should have actually modeled it the way I would have wanted it to be printed, which uh, would have been, uh, let's see, if this is my Z orientation, you know, if I go to modify a line, let's go here, I should have modeled it this way with this edge aligned to... Um, the X Y plane and it actually flipped the other way so yeah so if I would have sent it like that it would have gone in exactly the way I wanted it um, which we can still do that or we can just flip it in this software here by using the rotate option here so in this case uh, what I'm going to do is we'll do flip it in the X and then if I want to see how the, um, these are printing I can flip it this way either or whichever way I want to rotate it but you get the idea we'll just uh, undo that rotation lay flat and now I can send this to my printer and we'll test out how the bracket actually looks I printed it at 0.2 millimeter layer height and it took about 20 minutes to print. As you can see I even made a version of this bracket for my replicator too. I may later redesign this so that the camera doesn't interfere with any moving parts on the printer. But for now, it does the job and it does it well. Alright guys, thumbs up if you liked the video, subscribe for more content, and visit my website desktopmix.com for more Fusion 360 videos. Take care.